now it can continue okay whatever we have discussed so far so we understood uh, the basic concept uh, that is called uh, objectives of teaching and objectives of testing and then we first talk about objectives of teaching and this is for all the states whatever you are teaching english this is the main objectives the broad objectives of teaching english at the high school level then we talk about objective testing and i say whatever we talk about objectives of teaching includes in first objectives of evaluation to measure the extent of student achievement of the teaching instructional objectives that is mastery of language skills mental skills or study skills literary skills language elements etc vocabulary sound etc so we talk about and then we differentiate it other day we talk about uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, that beneficiaries and we talk about uh, this four questions that we need to ask each time we go to uh, the classroom and teaching and testing go hand in hand so there is no separate things for evaluation as we start teaching we start evaluation as well so we need to ask ourselves how justified am i in my evaluation how qualified am i to test how practical am i in te testing and what criteria do i use in my evaluation now we talk about by this we talk about subjective evaluation and objective evaluation and you we, you all participated in the activities and at the end of this exercise and we have understood that uh, <clears throat> uh, most of us unknowingly doing subjective evaluation and after discussion of this particular topic you have understood that we need to switch about to objective evaluation how do we do that by using certain criteria like content organization grammar and format and distributing the mark accordingly all right on these things so now it is clear then <clears throat> uh, it is repetition okay so uh, yeah now next co question is called class test that is called formative evaluation let's go back okay? formative and summative evaluation i say formative evaluation is to form learning to form the learning of the learners so here we have called class test so class test plays a vital role in evaluation of teaching learning activities that we need to focus on the process not the product if we fully concentrate on the process and begin the process in right direction then product will automatically happen in course of time so we don't need to uh, give mass focus on the product let us begin with the process okay so we'll be talking about that knowledge called procedural knowledge okay that is what is most important in developing conceptual knowledge <clears throat> so the main objectives of uh, class test is to uh, evaluate each student's progress attainment of course objectives as i said mental skill la basic language skills okay structure vocabulary all right <clears throat> and then performance in relation to that of his classmate individual growth and overall growth individual growth of a particular student and overall growth of the entire students in the particular class <clears throat> and and to make teaching learning and to make teaching learning more effective all right so this the class test focuses on the process all right how they learn how much they learn okay so first we talk about how they learn how we learn so types of uh, class test we said based on functions we say placement test pre test all right you had one pre test on day 1 or day 2 all right and again you will have post test also so that is called pre test placement test how much you already know and our teaching should based on connect to that thing called anchor from that that learning that you know from known to unknown and then called formative test as i said to make learners form their process correct all right all right doing right thing and doing it right that is what we we we, uh, we check by holding formative test what we are doing doing the right thing developing mental skill language skills study skills literary skills all right and doing in the right doing it right doing right thing and doing it right and that is what a uh, formative test help us all right that we are doing right thing what are the right things developing learners mental skill of understanding 
and listening, speaking, reading, writing, basic language skills, and then study skills, how to take note, how to make note, how to summarize, and then <clears throat> how to look at sources, how to uh, store information, how to uh, you know retrieve information and apply in certain things. That that is right thing. And we check whether we are doing in a right way or not. So that formative helps you. Uh, formative test helps you to do the right thing and doing it right. Then next diagnostic test. Even when you take food every day, sometimes people fall sick. Why? We need to go to the doctor to diagnose. Okay, what is the problem? Is there any internal problem? So like this, even if you do all these things systematically, doing right thing and right way, even then there will be some constant, some problem. Now, by holding diagnostic test, we need to check what is the strength of the learners, what is their weaknesses, and which areas uh, they have some weaknesses. Like, uh, most of you know better than me because you are all practicing teachers. You see, some children uh, make a lot of mistakes in using auxiliary verbs, especially in progressive tenses. Some children say, I, I am go to school, and some children say, I going to school. All right. So, so here you can, uh, you know, find out, trace the problem that is use of auxiliary verb. Sometimes uh, use of uh, prepositions. Some children use preposition where it is not necessary. Sometimes people use wrong preposition. Sometimes you, they <coughs> do not use preposition where it is necessary. So we need to diagnose. Okay. So similarly, articles, other uh, aspect of grammar, use of vocabulary. All right. So all these. We check, we assess, we filter, sift out their mistakes, weaknesses, and we concentrate on those areas where children normally make mistakes. <clears throat> Last time I went to one uh, big school, big organization. Of course, there's a private school. Uh, the director was a close friend of mine. So he said, uh, why don't we have one half day uh, conference seminar with the teachers? And then when I reached, they showed me the last, uh, you know, SSLC results. And many children got 100 out of 100 in mathematics, 100 out of 100 in English, 100 out of 100 in science, and 97 in Canada, mother tongue, Canada. So I asked, what is this problem? The child, the, the, the she is a, a girl, okay? The girl who got 100 out of 100 in mathematics, 100 in English, and 100 in science, and got 97 in Canada, that means she has the ability to get 100 in Canada also. Because it's three marks less. And in the meantime, she proved in other three subjects, she got 100 out of 100. Now, I asked the teacher, what is the problem here? All right. That she has the ability to get 100 out of 100 in Canada, but she got 97. And the teacher was very honest teacher. He sincerely told me, sir, actually, before exam, we have some backwash effect, okay, discussions, where they go wrong, uh, where they, <clears throat> they make a small, small mistakes. On that day, when all that other subject teachers came and discussed, he was absent. And he took responsibility. That's my mistake, sir. So sometimes unknowingly we make mistakes and the children suffer. And the child who got 97 in Canada, this 97 for whole life, she cannot improve it in SSLC. She can improve it in, in a PUC degree, but she cannot improve it, whatever is final. So for single mistake of, of, of the teacher, the child has the victim for the entire life of getting 97 in Canada. So sometimes we, we, we don't bother to mass about that. <laughs> Because we are so busy, all right? So that's part. And summative, as you say, amount of learning. How much have I learned at the end of one particular academic program? How much summative, sum up, to sum up? So these are all based on functions. And based on you, content you all know, you all do. Unit test, terminal test, final test. So these are the two different aspects of uh, yeah, called evaluation. <clears throat> and these are objective escape. Uh, because we will not have sufficient time. Coming back to the summative uh, test objectives, the objectives of question. So first thing, see, in other subjects, we have four objectives. In 
other subject we have four objectives namely namely these objectives are called uh, i'll write it here uh, knowledge knowledge understanding understanding okay sorry i made a mistake understanding and and uh, <coughs> application application and the skills control yeah yeah so <coughs> so in other subject other content subject we have four objectives objectives of question paper ssc level high school level or anywhere level so one is called knowledge another is called understanding application and skills but in english english or any language subject language subject are called skill subject so we do not have separate skill for that right so we have three objective one is called knowledge and instead of understanding in language we call comprehension understanding means 100% comprehension may not be 100% it's a layer okay ladder right so understanding means mathematics a square plus 2ab equal to a square plus 2ab plus b square that's a 100% understanding is necessary to solve a problem right but in language none of us has got 100% understanding of certain concept okay there is still scope for improvement but we check the level where i am here so there is scope for improvement go up little and from there you can go up something like this so we call comprehension <clears throat> so here <clears throat> in language we have three objectives one is called knowledge comprehension and expression now knowledge when you talk about knowledge we have four types of knowledge four as i already told you four types four types one is called uh, you know factual knowledge factual okay factual okay. first is factual knowledge and then you can have conceptual knowledge conceptual knowledge i have that later conceptual knowledge all right and then we say procedure procedural knowledge okay procedural knowledge all right first you know factual knowledge concept and meta cognitive meta meta cognitive so these are the four aspect of knowledge when you talk about knowledge there are four aspect one is called factual knowledge the just a facts only okay and this factual knowledge lead us to what is called understanding comprehension that is conceptual knowledge okay procedural knowledge and then little higher meta cognitive knowledge okay and finally in you know, wisdom that knowledge gets sense into wisdom insight and wisdom gives us enlightenment that is what is the final stage so these are all <clears throat> you know higher level of uh, knowledge so first we here in examination we have knowledge questions so here we talk about only factual knowledge that is called recognition and fact you know recall facts only facts so recognition knowledge is sometimes we say uh, fill in the blanks okay fill in the blanks clean in the blanks okay blanks right now fill in the sorry and <clears throat> fill in the blanks using appropriate article given in the bracket so here answer is given they are supposed to recognize it which one is the appropriate one correct one so that is what is called knowledge recognition and uh, and sometimes recall knowledge recall and we say who was who was or what is the name of the king who ruled in trivankar right in kerala trivankar all right now this type of question is what is called recall question name is not given name of the king is not given but you need to recall who was the king of the great king of vijayanagara kingdom the name of uh, the king is not given children they are supposed to recall okay there are many kings but of this krishna devaraya was the great king now that is what is called knowledge recognition but all these are factual knowledge not conceptual knowledge not procedural knowledge not meta cognitive knowledge all right so this is what 
the two aspect of knowledge question so as teacher you all know that one is knowledge recognition and knowledge recon but both the aspect is what is called based on only factual knowledge then we go, go for comprehension question now we all of us uh, talk about comprehension question but what is this comprehension question what do we mean when we say comprehend what are the elements that constitute the comprehension knowledge okay comprehension question so here we have given example that when we say comprehension we see the ability in grasping meaning of the meaning of the word phrases expression sentences etc the ability to take the insight of the vocabulary item used in that particular context so grasping meaning that is called you know understanding okay understanding the meaning and then illustrating you should be able to create a create an image of what you have understood what we have seen right so when i say a towering height so you should see something particularly you know going up okay something like this illustrating creating an image of something pixelization all right and comparing when i say i have comprehended things that i should be able to compare to this different elements so this is short this is long this is good this is bad ability to compare all right two different aspect of the same thing so something like this so that is called comparing so ability to compare certain uh, ideas the certain thoughts certain, certain data is what is called comparing and then classifying segregate okay one aspect of things based on certain traits pieces and another you know division based on certain facts so for example here here you say there are 70 69 people 70 people okay including me 71 now there are male teachers there are female teachers so this is a category so classify okay you can classify this is why are you raising hand shiva don't raise hand okay it covers this you know my uh, what is called uh, don't raise hand unnecessary if uh, there is no issues all right i'll close it done <clears throat> right so that is what called classify okay two different kinds of people are here male teachers lady teachers okay some translating <clears throat> now translating has got uh, layers of meaning one aspect of translating is translating from one language to another from telugu to english from kannada to english from malayalam to english from tamil to english that is one kind of things or english to tamil english to malayalam english to kannada english to telugu that is one kind of translation other ten, uh, types of translation is translating an idea into an action and that is what is most important thing translating an idea into an action that is what we call translating so it's an ability so who can translate it the person who has understood the in thing of both and then only we can do translating activity that is what also aspect of comprehension and finding relationship what is the connection between ideas okay Elem different elements of the ideas so we when we understand comprehend then only we can find the relationship between different elements of certain things okay and th similarly when we understand or comprehend we should be able to trust the errors mistakes when i understood something i can find out where the mistake is or if if there is any mistake at all all right sometimes we make mistake and we are not aware of it that's not good make mistake but be aware of the mistakes then only we can reduce it all right so that is what called comprehension and then finally last objective is what is called expression expression means using appropriate word phrases structures right when we speak or when we write right expression oral expression speaking and written expression writing so when we talk about expression it refers to using appropriate vocabulary items phrases and expressions and structures right and doing it correctly spelling it correctly if it is writing pronouncing it correctly if it is oral 
and using punctuation marks in writing and using appropriate pause in oral communication and whatever oral or written organizing ideas logical ordering of the ideas and putting them in right sequence so this is what we mean by expression why children some children get 10 out of 10 in an answer i got 100 out of 100 i got 100, 10 out of 10 how do i get because when you put all this put in right order then evaluator is convinced to give him or her the mark that is allotted because there is no mistakes no errors the student has written you know the answer using appropriate word phrases and structures spelling correctly using punctuation mark properly organizing ideas based on the principle three principles of organizing principles of importance principles of time of occurrence and principles of categorization and when you use you know organize an answer or an idea using all these three principles then you cannot cut mark on that all right and putting in right order so this is what we call uh, three objectives comprehension sorry knowledge comprehension and expression i hope you got the idea uh, if you have really got can you type in the chat box whether you have got the point what i'm trying to get across <clears throat> Good, good, good. Okay, very good. Let's stop typing now. This will do. So what I'm trying to say that as evaluator, once we, you know, have this picture, this, this image in our mind, all right, that knowledge, that a one question will be there something called you know knowledge question comprehension now what i mean by comprehension this this aspect now once you know you know we stop typing okay that will do now one know while teaching what you are supposed to do from the beginning of academic session you need to focus on this aspect all right not you know, just before the exam throughout this process of teaching you need to focus on this check in a formative assessment, you check whether they have understood the, the meaning, they have they grasped the meaning, all right, of the particular vocabulary item, the expression or structure, all right, so something like, similarly, can they illustrate, okay, pictureize something, create that picture, let them tell you what they have understood, pictureize it. Can they compare a different aspect of now as we is this should be the part of teaching every day and that is what is called right thing doing right thing in the right order right way all right something like this so similarly when somebody speak or maybe you could have you could uh, give a model what to speak on a particular topic and what are the points and how you organize them logically all right so that could be oral communication. And then you ask children to write that, that way, using us, sequencing in a right order, using the principles of importance, principles of time of occurrence, principles of categorization, then that will be logical, all right? So that is how we need to make these things part of our teaching from day to day. It is not the completing the, you know, lesson. I know. All of you try to uh, uh, you know, cover the syllabus. And in the process of covering, sometimes we cover up the syllabus, okay? So that should not happen. There should be some idea of these things. And then you should keep this thing in mind and start teaching a lesson. Lesson is something called medium as a tool. The textbook is a tool to achieve our expected goal, that objectives of teaching I, I was talking about, all right? So that is, and focus should be on these things, all right? And then only you can see, you know, the good results in SSLC examination, all right? Now, you all know uh, that Bloom's taxonomy, both old one and the revised one, <clears throat> all right? So we have cognitive domain, knowing, affective domain, feeling, and psychomotor doing, do, uh, psychomotor or cognitive domain called doing. 
Now, all of, all of us give more focus on knowing only, knowing, knowing, knowing. But we, we have never realized that knowing happens when you task this affective domain. All right? The learning cognitive domain become activated when affective domain is activated. What, what you learn, you learn something that you like it. The affective domain creates the liking, Re receiving, responding, you know, valuing, precision, okay, something like this, organization, characterization. This is first thing is if you create a love for the language, children will like it. If they laugh it, they will learn it better. Right? You must, you know, I, I'm pretty sure you will be able to tell me. If children like the teacher, they like the subject. Yes or no? Tell me. Can you type me in the chat box? If the if the children like the, the teacher, like the teacher, uh, yes, they uh, like the subject. Like the subject also. Yes, sir. Exactly, sir. Like this, like this. We also need to create a love for English. Not that English is something yes, that sir, exactly. we should. We should create love for English. And once you create that, that means you stir, you kindle the affective domain. If they like it, they will learn it. They will take the responsibility of learning. You don't need to pressurize for learning. And that is what is very important. Now this, you know, <clears throat> now what we say, earlier knowledge comprehension application is, you know, changed, you know, modified by Bloom's uh, students, his student in 2001. Now, instead of this form, they have made bar form, action. Knowledge, instead of knowledge, they say remember. Because many people say, I have learned it, but I have forgotten. Learning and forgetting is not learning. Learning and remembering is what is called learning. So we are, our task is to help children remember. How do we remember? How do we remember? As I said the other day, we make them remember by revising. Revising. Okay. Revising, reciting, all right? Reciting and repeating. Okay. Okay. Re re revising, or revise, re uh, and, uh, and repeat. Okay. Repeating. Okay. Repeating. Repeat. Okay. Re uh, revise. Sorry. Uh, revise, recite. Recite and repeat, repeat it, okay? By repeating, sorry, repeating, not repeat, repeating. By revising, we make them remember. By reciting, we make them remember. By repeating, we make them re remember. So once they remember, then only they understand. It's a comprehension. We earlier used to say comprehension. Now say understanding is necessary. Understanding and uh, that we say, what is time? What is the time? Now, what is the difference between these two expressions? What is time? What is time? What is time? And what is the time? What is the time? Now, these two, what is time and what is the time? All right. What is time and what is the time? Sorry, I made a mistake. Okay, I'll, I'll remove it. What is time? What is time? And what is the time? Now here, this this two expression. Now can somebody tell me what is? Yeah, somebody is yes. Yeah. So what is time and what is the time that you need to understand the difference between these two concepts. We are talking of two different times. One time is called concept of time and one is called instant time, the clock time. Now that understanding is 100%. That 100% understanding is necessary. Then only a student will be able to make it. Otherwise you will say, no, first one is wrong, second one is correct, something like this. No, why? That conceptual understanding, that understanding is 100%. Mathematics problem you cannot solve with comprehension. You need to have 100% you know, understanding. You cannot prepare oxygen gas using this 
tool in the you know instrument in the laboratory and if you make a mistake okay then there will be fire in the laboratory right so that's 100 percent understanding is also necessary in language use otherwise you will say grammatically correct but that is socially un inappropriate people will laugh at you so, all right something like this so we not only make something grammatically correct we also need to make it socially appropriate. People should ac accept what we say. All right. So that's what we also need to understand. Okay. So as I told you, there are four aspects of knowledge. We say, you know, again, all this cognitive aspect I'm talking about. Textual knowledge, remember it. Again, this column. Textual knowledge, understand it. Textual knowledge, apply it. Apply Textual it. knowledge, analyze it. Analyze it. Jogesha, please mute your mic. All right. Textual knowledge, evaluate it. All right. Textual knowledge, create it. Okay. Something like this. So this is new aspect of, uh, you know, earlier we said KCSA, knowledge, comprehension, application, analysis, and evaluation. Now we call remember, understand, apply, analyze, evaluate, and create. Similarly, conceptual knowledge, all right, remember, understand all these aspects, you know, procedural knowledge. So this knowledge dimension, how we need to use it all right? All right? in cognitive process of learning. So that is what is level. Four levels of understanding, sorry, levels of knowledge that we as teachers should know. All right? So this, uh, when we talk about, so factual knowledge is knowledge that is basic to specific discipline. This dimension refers to essential facts, terminology, Details or elements students must know or be familiar with in order to understand a discipline or solve a problem in it. That is what is called textual knowledge. Conceptual knowledge is knowledge of classifications, principles, generalization, theories, models, structures pertinent to a particular disciplinary area. All right? And Procedural knowledge refers to information or knowledge that helps students to do something specific to a discipline, subject, area, study. It also refers to methods of inquiry, very specific and finite skills, algorithms, techniques, and particular methodologies. Metacognitive knowledge is the awareness of one's own cognition about the particular cognitive process, how I learn. How I learn something better right what is the best way that i learn better what are the different strategies i use and which study helps me to learn something better remember something better so that is what is called metacognitive skills and we should be aware of our own way of learning how i learn better right so it is just a reflective knowledge about how to go about solving problems Cognitive tasks to include contextual and conditional knowledge. All right? So that is what is most important for us. The children who are aware of how well they solved a particular problem in the past and applying the same principles in solving the present task problem, solve problem is a better student. Is a better student. Or he or she knows how. He or she could do de, uh, could do something better in the past and utilizing the same knowledge in it. That's why I say that knowledge can be transferable. If you are good in reading your mother tongue, Kannada, Telugu, Malayalam, and Tamil, you can transfer the same knowledge in reading English also. But the knowledge is transferable. All right. But that is what I would like to highlight. Okay. <clears throat> So <clears throat> now next point of blueprint we'll talk about is called types of test. So we uh, we have four different types of test items and question items in the examination. One is called essay type or long answer type question. Essay type question or long answer type question. One is short answer type question. One is very short answer type question. And one is called objective type question. These are four. Now next point we need to have understanding of distribution of mark. How much mark to knowledge question? How much mark to comprehension question? How much mark to uh, expression questions? And how much mark on essay type questions? How much short answer, very short answer, objective type? All right? And then uh, weightage to object. How much no 
mark on knowledge question how much mark on comprehension question how much mark on expression questions and again content all right how much mark on unit number 1 how much mark on unit number 2 how much mark on unit number 3 4 5 6 7 something like this all right so this we'll talk about and then next is language of questions what the language the language of the question should be completely definite not here and there okay not unambiguous having two meanings ambiguous means having two meanings many meanings unambiguous means having only one meaning whether it is in andhra pradesh or telangana or kerala or pondicherry or karnataka meaning remains the same children understand the same thing all right and it should be simple and it should be so simple that even the lower class student can understand the question even though they do not know the answer they should be able to understand what the question ask you to do all right so and then we'll talk about question paper setting and then value point and distribution of mark we'll talk we'll talk about all this thing now look at this okay let us take an a small example of 20 mark question paper all right so here we have taken one class 8 uh, standard 8 maximum mark 20 all right because we will not have sufficient time to prepare 100 mark questions so i'll just show you how we do it so topic of the lesson is the sun and its family all right now way weight is two objectives so here we have written three objectives of question one is called knowledge comprehension and expression so knowledge mark we have given 10 mark that is percentage 50% mark out of 20 we have given 10 on knowledge question now again this the mark on knowledge question is much more in lower classes and the knowledge question get you know will be mark distribution of mark on knowledge question at higher level will be less all right because first we give more emphasis on knowledge of all types conceptual knowledge procedural knowledge all right <clears throat> uh, then factual knowledge and then meta cognitive knowledge so and especially knowledge recall and recognition so and then once they have sufficient knowledge then we go on to comprehension and expression all right so here it's because it is standard 8 we have put knowledge question 50% comprehension 25% means 5 mark and uh, expression question 5 mark of 25 that means out of 20 we have given 10 on knowledge 5 on comprehension 5 on expression so here remember this is we are giving weightage to objectives next we give uh, weightage uh, to <coughs> forms of question here we have written all the four types of question one to essay type or long answer type question short answer type question very short answer type question and objective type questions now number of questions essay type one because long answer all this number of question will be less all right mark five mark we have given five mark question so 25 mark out of 20 five mark means 25 percent and then short answer type number of question three total mark six that means two mark is so we have given 30 percent very short answer type three questions okay and then mark three mark that is 15 person objective type six mark all right and six questions that is 30 percent mark now here in this i would like to tell you now how do we allot time for mark so our principle of allotting time how much time we allot if there's a question of five mark we use five to 15 minutes time 5 minutes to 15 minutes based on the mark if mark is 5 mark 5 to 15 minutes we can give and when is 6 mark so time will be 12 minutes that means 1 to 2 minutes one mark questions 1 to 2 minutes two mark questions 2 to 4 minutes 5 minutes maximum all right something like one mark question 1 to 2 minutes right half mark questions half to 1 minute something like this so this is we have given uh, weightages to form of question so 5 6 and 3 and 6 all right this is the percentage out of 20 mark and then finally we give content weightages to content so content what are the contents one is lesson grammar and vocabulary all right these are three we divide it into three so content the lessons we give 11 mark that is 55% 
grammar we give 6 marks 30 percent vocabulary we get uh, 3 marks and 15 percent so total 100 percent all right total mark 20 all right so with this now we come to the complete question paper blueprint of the question uh, complete question paper here we write object uh, objectives uh, and unit objectives and please unit please here sir, please please show the previous slide uh, please mute it please mute it let me complete it and then i'll tell you yeah so here we talk about knowledge comprehension and expression all right we put this uh, objectives of questions we have three objectives knowledge question comprehension question and expression question here we put uh, unit uh, and form of questions all right that is uh, uh, forms of question this is et means essay type question sat means very sh sorry short answer type question vsat question means very short answer ot means objective type under knowledge similarly essay type short answer type very short answer type objective under comprehension Similarly, essay type, very sh uh, sorry, short answer type, very short answer type, objective type under expression. So here we have put questions. Now unit number one, that is a lesson. Unit number two, grammar and vocabulary. All right. So we have put this and now we have put. So knowledge, we have not put any essay type questions in unit number one and unit number two. What we have put? We have put knowledge questions, so like very short answer type question, very short answer type question. How many question? One question, all right? Two marks, all right? One question, oh, sorry, one mark, sorry, sorry, I mean, the outside one, you see it's the mark. And inside bracket two, that is number of questions. Outside the mark, one mark questions. How many questions? Two questions. Similarly, objective pair questions. Mark, how much mark? One mark each. So how many questions? Two questions. All right. And then we go to comprehension level. Here we again have very short answer type question. How many mark? One mark is how many questions? Three questions. And then we go to expression. Here we have lesson. Okay. We have five mark. How many questions? One questions. All right. So total 12 mark. And then we come to subunit number two, that's a grammar and vocabulary. We have short answer type, two mark questions. How many questions? Two questions. Comprehension, we have uh, short answer type questions. How many, que how many mark? Uh, two marks. How many questions? One question. And expression, short answer type, two mark questions. How many questions? One question. So now we have this total. Here you see short answer type two means four mark. All right. So uh, here you see two into two, that is four. Okay. Two questions, four mark, two, two mark, two questions, two mark, two questions like this. We calculate and 20 mark. So this is the principles. Uh, Anup, sir, you were talking about the previous one. Okay. This one. Yeah. This one. It's a content. All right. This is weightage to content. Anup, sir. Yes, yes sir. I am listening. I am listening. Uh, so this is the previous one. Right. Okay. So expression type questions in the sense, uh, those questions, I mean, um, uh, letter type or otherwise discourse type questions, do you mean for? Uh, this was the expression letter. question, sir. This is expression question here. So here is this letter type, you know, any question you have broad question, that is long answer type question. So this okay. is uh, uh, this one, uh, expression essay type question. Means long discourse answer. level questions which are having some sort of a format. Huh, that's uh, this asset type question. So if it is letter, you are asking, then it is letter format. And if it is uh, um, uh, only answer type, then paragraph format, not bulleted format. So asset type question, you cannot answer in bulleted form. You will have to always write in paragraph form. So that is a form format. Yes. So, one right, more thing. so could, you please, could, could you please mention once again that uh, what is time and what is the time? Oh, time? Oh, that one. That I have given example. Time is a concept. What is time means what is life, what is time. This is a concept time. So there we don't use article. Means rule is time is a concept, doesn't take an article. But time is an instant, instant clock time always takes an article. So that's the difference between what is time and what is the time. What is the time means I'm asking your clock time. What is the time? You say 2.45. So that is what is that time? But when I say what is time, 
If say, sir, you first tell me what is life, I'll tell you what is time. Okay, that is the concept. Did you understand, sir? Uh, yes, sir, sir. Just like, uh, how, uh, how do you do? How are you? No, that is different. How do do we say when we meet somebody first time? We say, uh, how do do? But when we know, they say, you, you know me, I know you. I cannot say, how do do? Because I already met you several times. So in, in, that is a convention. Okay, we come convention. We normally say, How are you, sir? Okay, because yes, you know yes. me. But first time when I meet, I don't know who is uh, uh, Anub Anthony. And if somebody asks me, Sir, meet Mr. Anub Anthony, then I say, okay. Hello, how do you do? And you also say, Hello, how do you do? But next time when I uh, you know meet you, and I say, Hello, how are you, sir? Anub, sir, how are you? All right, okay. and then finally, we become very close friends. Okay, we sit together. Okay, sing together and I say, how is life going? All right. So we come become informal, slowly, slowly close, something like this. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's a different concept. Yeah. Here it is concept. Time is a concept. We always say what is time, what is life, okay? Something like that kind of lifetime, that kind of concept. Right? Sir, philosophical, that, that, philosophical me, sir that, that is fate, no, sir. Fate. Time. What is time means? Uh, that is philosophical questions. Okay, time, oh. the concept of time, so, uh, the concept of life. What is life? How you define life? Similarly, how you define time? That's a concept. So there we don't need article. But when okay. you talk about instant time, now that is 2:45, you say what is the time? Okay, you use an article. So rule we remember. Uh, the time is a concept, doesn't take an article. Time is an instant, always take an article. That's a easy rule to remember. All right? So this is all about uh, blueprint and question paper setting. Now, value uh, point again here, when I say here, uh, look at this expression question, five mark. Five mark question, one question. Now in five mark questions, how many points you want children to write? You student to write at least five points, yes or no? These five points, each point is called value point. That means children who have written five points in answering this five mark question will get five, but children who have written only four points will get four. That is what is called value point. All right, so. Uh, when you say two mark question, you expect at least two points. Otherwise, you may maybe uh, four points, half half mark, two points, two marks, something like this. So those are called value points. That means when I say, when I ask you, uh, okay, tell me four functions. Tell me four functions of uh, 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 four functions or uh, the four points. Of an apple, apple, you know, a p p l e apple. Okay, okay. Or I say a uh, four mark. Okay, four mark. I say uh, say something about apple, an apple. I'll 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 an apple. Okay, an apple. Right, and mark four. So I say it is not plus, it is four mark. Okay, I'll, I'll again I'll make a mistake. Okay, say something about an apple. Apple total mark is four. Four marks. Now what I said, I say something. I say say something about apple, and I have given four marks. What are the four points you would like to say? Anybody can type in the chat box. That means I am giving four marks. Means as a student, you are supposed to write four different points. What are the four points that you want to write about Apple? Shiva Prashad, only one point. You will get one mark out of four. I have given four mark. 
Color, taste, shape, number, okay? Apple is good for health, one mark. Color, taste, okay. And apple is good, okay, one mark, one mark, one mark. One mark, color, one mark. I have given four marks, right? Four points and get four marks, all right? Color, taste, shape, same thing. No, sir. While, while we chatting, the chat box is not allowing us to continue our no, questions. Sir. Don't, don't put enter. You keep writing, then it will take it. <laughs> don't, uh, don't put enter. Number one, enter. No, it will come automatically. So put, write all this thing and then put enter. Okay, yeah, good, okay. healthy, tasty, nice. Okay. No, again, one mark. <laughs> okay. Protein content, one mark. Okay. Okay, that will do. Okay, now this is where our children wrong. Yeah, I'll tell you. Okay, stop typing. Okay, I understand your problem. Okay. Sir, you... sir, if they if they apply, if they don't away. There is the same one point. One point. I want four points because I have given four marks. Yeah, yeah. All right. I have given four marks. You need to write four points. What you are so if they are talking about all this is one point. Okay. So you will all of you will get one mark. Now, if you ask me, sir, you tell me what will you write for getting this four mark? All right. So I'll I'll ask you one thing. I'll give you a clue and you will find the point. First one is first one is. First one is, somebody was sitting in the garden and something fell on his head and he discovered something. One clue. What is this? Newton. Ah. Newton. Newton. So what did he discover? What did he discover? Gravitational force. Yes, that, that is science. Am I right? That is one point science. Right. I'll give another clue and then you find out the point. One couple was sitting somewhere in a garden and uh, somebody asked not to eat any, any apple there. But somehow they made a bite and they fell down. Bible. What Adam, Adam and Eve. Adam, Adam and Eve. Very good. That is religion. Okay. Religion is peaceful. Okay. Religion. Okay. Very good. Very good. I'll give another clue. All right, and you talk about that, okay? <clears throat> All right, so we have found uh, somebody sat in a garden and something fell on his head. So he discovered gravitational pull. And then two, one couple sat in a garden. They were asked not to eat and they ate and they fell down. All right, and that's why we are all here today. All right, and then next is, there is a band. There is a band, B-A and the band, music band. All right. Do you know the name of the music band? They sing together, four or five people. An apple band, okay? That is music. All right. That is music. Yes or no? And finally, what you all said, it is also health. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now I have four points. Yes or no? So will you give me four mark, four mark, yeah, orchestra, yeah. Four mark now, because I have talked four things about Apple. Yes, sir. Points. So that is how we need to help children, you know, write the appropriate amount of points to get the appropriate amount of mark allotted in the question paper. So that's what is important. With this, we'll quickly uh, go through this last point called comprehensive and continuous evaluation. So here, Continuous and comprehensive CCE, it is concept continuous evaluation. Continuous evaluation means regularity in assessment. You continuously do that. As you start testing, you start evaluating. All right. Frequency of testing, diagnosis of learning gaps where they make mistakes, and use of remedial measures, reteaching. All right. Wherever they have not learned, you come, come back again and reteach it and establish it. Continuous evaluation is evaluation system which integrates evaluation with the teaching learning process. 
All right, as if this is start chasing. Begins with the beginning of the program itself. It is not the last item that we normally think of. All right. Similarly, third concept of a continuous uh, con uh, evaluation is it is a system of evaluation which emphasizes formative evaluation. That a process how they learn, where evaluation is used in every step of development of the child. Not only academic, cognitive, other aspect also, but it's forming them to develop right habit. Okay, that is called com continuous. Comprehensive uh, refers to you know areas of assessment covering both the scholastic and co-scholastic or non-scholastic aspect of development of the site. That children not only get a good mark, they also can win a race, running race, all right? Can write an article for the wall magazine, can uh, sing a song, can recite a poem. All these are also the part of the growth, all right? Can jump, high, high jump, long jump, get a prize in it, okay? Can play well in the cricket team, okay? They can do coco, co co uh, then the kabaddi and all these things. So this is what called comprehensive. And not only that, we also said, you know, this, this second aspect aims at providing activities to people's and areas, physical health, creative and aesthetic development, promotion of desirable interest, attitudes, and timely guidance to people's through system of regular assessment in these things. So we give all these different activities and develop their attitude, positive attitude, okay? Uh, create an awareness in different aspect of things and aesthetic values, all right? Sense of respect, all right? Somebody is very good, uh, may not be that good in English and mathematics, but very punctual, regular, neat and tidy, cuts nails, and, okay? Shape, uh, you know, the uh, haircut properly, okay? Something like this. So. Have leadership quality very helpful in the classroom. So you also add all these things for their you know assessment of the learning, and we con continuously help them. So here objective uh, to make teaching learning process more effective by making evaluation as an integral part of it, and to make school education wider and comprehensive by giving emphasis on non-scholastic or co-scholastic areas also. And trust the teacher responsible to evaluate the children internally, their attitude, all right, their social behavior, their leadership qualities, their positive attitude, all these things. Okay. So these are some of the objectives I, I thought I would share with you. So this is my last class. So um, all right. So um, uh, yeah, these are my last, uh, this is my last work. Now you will have teaching practice. I wish you all the best. And there will be 10 mark assignment on this uh, teacher professional development aspect. So once you complete your course, I'm not giving now. And once you complete, all right, I'll give you uh, an assignment. I'll be typing here on this module. You will have to go to uh, teacher professional development, teacher development area, click that, and then you will see one assignment. So assignment will be of 10 mark, and you'll have to read the assignment carefully and then you'll have to write it. I'll give seven days time. So 30, your course ends on 31st, right? 30th, sir. 30th. Yes, sir. So I, I, sir, I'll put the assignment on mute. I'll put, no, listen, no, listen, please, listen. Please, sir. Whatever may be, sir, I'll, I'll post the assignment on 1st uh, January. 1st January, and you will have to submit your assignment on 8th January. You will get complete seven days time, all right? And you will not submit before 8th, all right? You will submit only on 8th, all right? Not before 8th. So you take full one week's time. I will post the assignment on 1st only, not now. Don't go now. On 1st, I'll post this assignment on here, here in this site, Moodle, you will click on teacher pro uh, professional development and there you will find the assignment. Read the assignments and then prepare the answer, draft, redraft, finalize, keep it with you. And on 8th, you will submit it. All right. And uh, I have already shared my email with your coordinator. Madam will post it. So <clears throat> you will uh, that. not before that. Only 